Good morning. Welcome to worship today. I'm glad that you're with us. And if you're watching online, I'm glad that you're here with us as well. If you can comment, say good morning. We'll be glad to celebrate with you this morning. Um, and in Bible class earlier, we had some people online um, asking us about the, the sound um, volume amount, and we're working on it. Uh, forgive us if we haven't gotten it all straightened out yet. Um, we'll try to, to get back to normal next Sunday at least. But I'm glad that you're here with us today. We're, of course, on another week of the Red Letter Challenge. Uh, I hope that if you bought a book that you're following us along at home, that you're reading a devotion every day during the Red Letter Challenge. Uh, today we're talking about what? Forgiveness or forgiving, to use the action words that are in the Red Letter Challenge. So we'll be talking about forgiving today, and that means for the rest of the week now, starting today going onward, our devotions will be about forgiving as well. Um, so that's our order of service. It's outlined for you in your worship folder. Uh, we'll be following that this morning. Uh, let's begin by standing up, turning around, waving to one another and saying good morning. Let's begin our worship this morning. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So then let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Here again, the good news and message of God. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue our service by singing together our first hymn, Love in Christ is Strong and Living.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our Bible readings for today. Remember, during the Red Letter Challenge, we've had two Bible readings. In between the two, we'll join in singing the Lenten verse, which is in your bulletin. First, uh, our Old Testament reading from Isaiah. Our first lesson is from Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 12. Remember these things, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I formed you. You are my servant. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, O depths of the earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains, O forest, and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and will be glorified in Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to John chapter 8. Glory to you, O Lord. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placed her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent, bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let's continue by singing our next hymn together, God Love the World. Thank you. 
grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, we're talking about the Red Letter Challenge. We're on day 13 out of 40 on this Red Letter Challenge. And many of us at home are following along, doing daily devotions based on the same themes that we're talking about in worship as well. And the point of the Red Letter Challenge is to focus on five main themes that Jesus' words themselves seem to focus on in the New Testament. The five themes that will be following along, the five targets that we're aiming at in order to, to live as Jesus' children. We, we've gone through them already. Maybe you can say them again with me. Uh, there's being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. Last week, we talked about being, what it meant to be with God, what it meant to be in a relationship with him. Today, we're talking about forgiveness. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I brought in an illustration, my drone. Do you remember my drone and how? So I thought I, I needed to bring in another one today. And not another drone, but another illustration. There you go. It's a couch, right? I mean, we all know what couches are. We've all got couches in our homes. We sit on the couches. Our company sits on the couches. This one happens to be from my office because I didn't know how I was going to get the one from home here to church. So, But, you know, it looks nice. No stains. It's comfortable. It's not out of shape or worn down. Um, it looks good on the outside. And when people come into my office, they sit on the couch with me. But there's something about couches that maybe you've noticed at home, too. I mean, no matter what it looks like on the outside, there's another layer to a couch, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? What happens deep down underneath, in between and under the cushions of the couch? Okay, so let's see what we're going to find here. Oh, well, there's some change. That always falls out of my pockets when I'm sitting down. And some of these green candy mints, I love these things. I've got a, a bowl full of them uh, in my office. Look, here's a mask. Now, nothing says 2021 like finding a mask under your cushion on your couch, right? And a church pen. They're very nice. They say uh, Lake Oconee Lutheran Church on them. So, uh, you know, we find those things under couch cushions. What's over here? Oh, look at this. It's a shirt from the world, 13-time world champion Green Bay Packers. I don't know how that got there, but maybe just to remind you about them, I'll put it right here on display during the rest of my sermon. You know, it's amazing what we find under the cushions in our couch. We, we invite people over, we, we sit on it, we, we want it to look nice and be comfortable for everybody, but deep down inside, you had no idea that you were sitting on all this stuff, all this debris that just falls out of your pockets or, or falls down. If you do a deep dive into the couch, you don't know what's going to be down there. Is it going to be some change? Is it going to be the TV remote? Maybe that's how they found the vaccine in the first place. I don't know. Down in somebody's couch cushion someplace. But you don't know that you're sitting on all this stuff when you first sit down. You absolutely have no idea. It's crazy that you don't know it's down there. But in a lot of ways, the reason we're talking about it today is this couch. It's a lot like you and me coming to church this morning. On the outside, we're in our good clothes. Our hair is combed. Everything looks good. But deep down in our life, there's a lot of stuff that we've maybe stuffed down in the cushions. 
A lot of stuff that's buried underneath the water that nobody who's around us would even recognize was being there. We're a lot like this couch in our own lives every day. See, the real answer, though, isn't to stuff it down some more, like what I did here, to slide it a little farther back to make sure nobody recognizes it. The real answer is to bring it out, to forgive us. Real freedom comes from the fact of recognizing that we're a mess, first of all, and foremost of all, and that that mess is what Jesus lived, died, and rose again for. St. Paul, in the letter to the Romans, writes this in chapter 3, there's no one righteous, not even one. And when I think Paul said, no one, not even one, he was including you in that. He was including me in that amount. We have to understand that we're sinners, first of all. That there is an under-the-cushion aspect to your life and to my life. And that God knows that. But in fact, more than knowing, he cleans up after us. That he forgives us. We all carry around a mess deep down underneath. Uh, we're all like an old couch that keeps filling up down there, even if we try to sweep it out once in a while. But Jesus, he calls us to be his own, despite our messes. He makes us his own, despite our faults and failings. And he gives us the forgiveness that we need. In fact, if there's only one thing that you listen to from our sermon, our message today, I hope it's to know this, that Jesus did not die on the cross. He did not suffer a brutal death and then rise from the dead so that you can live the rest of your life as a slave to sin, so that you can live the rest of your life with junk underneath the cushions, shoved as far back and as deep down as you can get them. He died and rose again so that you might be free. Free in the present and feel free in the future to know that he is always with you. This morning, in our church, as we talk about forgiveness, God wants you to flip over the cushions in your couch, to bring up all those things that you thought you had put away, that you thought you had shoved back so that nobody would see them, to take all that garbage, that, that debris, that crud, that junk, and to remove it. That's what he does for us. And there's a picture of him doing that. There's a picture of what God's grace is all about in the Bible. Of course, we use a lot of words to try to describe God, words that, that, that are kind of hard to understand. He's the Trinity, a, a triune God. Uh, that he's co-equal and co-eternal, that he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and it's hard to get our hands on what God is really like. But there's one picture that God gives us that perfectly shows what God is like, and that's his Son, Jesus Christ. We look to Jesus, and in his own words, if we know him, we know the Father. And there's a picture of Jesus in John chapter 8. It's the gospel reading that we already heard. It's actually John chapter 7, verse 53 to 8, 11. We talked about that in Bible class today, but John chapter 8 for short. There's a picture of Jesus and God's forgiveness that he gives to us. He, he's teaching in the temple, and there's a big crowd around him. And all of a sudden, the Pharisees come up. And they're coming in a bunch, and they're coming with a sense of purpose. And while they're coming, they're dragging somebody with them. Let's listen to it again. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group. Teacher, they said, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? Well, 
the right, of course. I mean, apart from the fact that they only brought the woman and not the man who was also cheating and caught in the act of adultery, if you believe the story. But they're right. And Moses in Deuteronomy says, if a man is found sleeping with another man's wife, both the man who slept with her yeah, and the woman must die. You must purge the evil from Israel. But the reason the Pharisees brought this woman was because they were trying to spring a trap on Jesus. They, they wanted a basis for accusing him. It's probably a plan that they had been plotting and, and lining up for a while. And maybe that's why they didn't bring the man, because he was really in on that as well. But they're coming, not because they care about the woman and her sin. They're coming because they want to trap Jesus. They want to catch him in a difficult situation. They want to catch him in a contradiction in front of everybody who's listening. If Jesus says, yes, that is what Moses says, go ahead and stone her, then that seems to go against everything that he's teaching. And if Jesus says, no, don't stone her, then they can say, well, are you not following God's word? Is that not important to you? Is the law not important? So they're trying to trap Jesus. But they're overmatched, in effect, when they go against Jesus. They, they present the charge, and what does Jesus do? It's, it's the most unusual thing. John says he, bent, he bends down, and he starts writing in the dirt with his finger. Can you picture that? I mean, they've hatched this plan. They've schemed it all up. They, they actually got it to work. They caught the woman in adultery. They grab her, and they're going bustling over. They're going to put it to Jesus. They're going to get that big aha moment. And finally, they're going to get him exactly where they want him to be. It's a moment that they've been waiting for. And Jesus just bends down and starts drawing in the dirt. I mean, how frustrating that had to be for the Pharisees. He's, he's ignoring them. This is their big moment that they've been working on, maybe for weeks or for months, and all he's doing is doodling. And so they're not happy, so they keep poking him. They keep prodding him. And finally, Jesus stands up and he says this, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And then John goes, again, he stoops down and writes on the ground. And at this, those who heard began to go away, one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. You know, it's interesting sometimes, not only what the Bible includes, but what it doesn't include. I mean, this idea of Jesus bending down and drawing in the dirt. What was, he, what was he writing? I mean, was he just doodling like you do on your pen when you're on the phone with somebody at home making little happy faces and smiley faces? Was he writing out a Bible verse. I mean, Jesus probably knew lots of Bible verses. He could have been writing out a Bible verse. One preacher that I read on this had an interesting thought. He thought that Jesus was writing names in the dirt. He's writing the name of somebody who was in the crowd asking him, Tom, and then he'd draw a line, and then he wrote a sin that he had committed. And Joe and then he'd draw a line, and he wrote a sin that he had committed. And that's why people started walking away. Because they were, Jesus was recognizing they had a lot under their cushions in their life as well. I don't know if that's true or not. That could be just a nice picture that we have in our mind. Maybe the older ones left because they began to understand they had a lot of sins in their lives, whether Jesus had written them in the dirt or not. Maybe they left 
because they understood they had a little more dirt underneath their cushions in their life. You know what's fascinating? A lot of people uh, think that we come to Jesus with our best on, that we want to come to Jesus looking like this couch, kind of smooth and clean and not worn out, that we come to Jesus and then he'll love me and he'll forgive me. And instead, we have a picture of this woman. Just 30 minutes earlier, maybe, she was in bed sleeping with another man who wasn't her husband. Just 30 minutes. She had no idea she'd be meeting Jesus that day. She had no chance maybe to put on a little lipstick or comb her hair or make sure she was wearing the right jewelry to go along. She's dragged unceremonially and thrown there right in front of Jesus. She wasn't planning on meeting the Savior. She wasn't planning on having her life changed. She didn't have time to to get herself to look as respectable as possible. And in fact, according to John, up to this point, she hasn't even said anything. She hasn't made a confession. She hasn't fallen on her knees and begged for mercy. She hasn't denied the charges and said, this this was all a campaign against me. And here we have Jesus breaking into her life in a most unexpected way. Sometimes you and me, we come to this place. And we're here, but we're not here. We're here, but our mind is wandering. We're here, but we're thinking and worrying about what's going on in our own life. We're here, but we've heard all of this before. And frankly, I can kind of be present and tune out at the same time, and I won't really miss anything, because I know sooner or later the pastor's going to say, amen, we'll have a few prayers, and then I'll be able to go and do what I really need to do today. We don't expect Jesus to break into our life and to turn our life upside down, to flip our cushions and look at all the things that we've hidden away. But Jesus comes to you and me today and he says, I've got something better for you. He comes to you and me today and he says, I've got something better and you can take it right now. He did that to the woman. He straightened up and he said to her, woman, Where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. And Jesus said this. Can you believe it? He said, then neither do I. Go and sin no more. The only one who had the ability to hold a rock to stone her, the only one who was sinless, who could have thrown that first stone, he dropped his rock. He he let it go. Most people know John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his own one and only son, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But sometimes we forget the next verse, John 3.17. It said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world through him, but to save the world through him. Jesus comes to justify. That's a fancy word. He comes to forgive, to clean out our couch cushions. This woman's couch cushion got flipped open in front of everybody and they saw the mess that was there. And you know what Jesus said? I can take that crud. I can take that mess. Uh, Don't listen to the lies of other people. The jury is gone. All your naysayers are gone. Now it's just you and me. Now it's just you and your God. And Jesus says, I love you. I've been your defense attorney, and now I'm judged. And I'm declaring you forgiven, innocent, and free. I love it when the people who are accusing me are not here anymore. And I really love it when my own accusing voice stops accusing me. Because Jesus says, you are free. One of the biggest problems we have in our world is that we listen to the lies and accusations of the voice 
uh, of the enemy more than we listen to the truth of the gospel, the truth of God. The gospel says Jesus came to save us, to justify us. The gospel says Jesus loves you. And every time the enemy tries to remind you of what you've done, every time the enemy tries to bring up what's underneath your cushions, you can say, Jesus didn't condemn me. The only one who could hold a rock dropped it and didn't throw it at me. That I know I've screwed up. I know I've sinned. I know I've hurt others. But God got down in the dirt and wrote my name and then wiped it out. He's forgiven me. And he didn't come to condemn me, but to save me. There's mercy for you and me. There's mercy for every dirty person, every unclean person, everybody who has some regrets, some things that they're hiding, some things they don't want anybody else to know. Well, this is what God wants you to know. He is stooped down and he raises you up high and he's made you his own. John will also write this, not in his gospel, but in one of his letters in the New Testament. He says it this way, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Because you know Jesus, because you know that man, you are righteous. You are just. Not because you deserve it, not because you look clean, but because he is a God who loves you. Maybe you feel sometimes like the woman, full of sin, very apparent where the problems are in your life. You can see it. But God says to you, you are my child. He says to you, you are forgiven. You're not washed up. You're not used goods. You have a new life in me. Or maybe honestly, more often we're like the Pharisees who seem to have a nice clean couch in their lives, whose life looks like they're put together. But inside, Underneath the cushions, they're hiding all types of stuff, all kinds of sins. Either way, the words of Jesus are the same. You are forgiven. You are mine. My grace covers you. The challenge part of this is that now that Jesus has made us clean, now that he has forgiven us, he calls us to forgive those who are around us as well, to put his words into practice. As we experience his forgiveness again, we can't help but share that forgiveness with others. And you know what? I believe that's the perfect thing, that the time is now for Lake Oconee Lutheran Church to do this. We who have been forgiven have to lead the charge in our nation, have to lead the charge in our community to forgive each other. People are against each other now more than ever before. They're against each other because of politics. They're against each other because of race. They're against each other because of 101 other flashpoints that are out there. But Jesus calls us to forgive. Too many are escalating the situation. At Lake Oconee Lutheran Church, we want to lead the charge, not with hatred, hatred and bitterness, but with forgiveness and with love, because that's what God has done for us. Somebody's got to lead the charge. Somebody's got to start. And God has picked his people, his family, his faith-filled, big-thinking followers of Jesus Christ to go and to forgive completely, fully, freely, without hesitation, because that's what he's done for us. Amen. And may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's word, 
we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Would you stand with me, please? We confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having already submitted our offerings at the door as we came in, we'll continue our worship with our prayers. You've received the prayer sheet in your bulletin so that you can keep these needs in your prayer life this week in your devotion. Uh, I have two corrections or changes to them. We, uh, on the sheet on the back, we've been praying for Georgina Wilson, uh, who is in intensive care. Georgina passed away this week, and so today we pray for her family and friends. And we add Lance Paler to our prayers. Lance will be undergoing surgery this coming Tuesday. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we confess to you that we come to you oh, a little bit like the sofa in our homes looking pretty good on the outside, but if you dig down, it's easy to find out that we're messy, stained, full of sinful garbage even. We, like St. Paul, confess to you today that there is no one righteous in your sight, not even us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon us and remind us that you have flipped the cushions over in our life and have forgiven us. When we stand accused in your sight, you tell us that you have something better for us and you drop the rock. Help us, like the woman in the gospel lesson, truly know that we are loved and forgiven and thus renewed by your grace. And Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us today and in your love and by your word, give us the power to forgive those who are around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of love, deliver the sick from their illnesses, give relief to the suffering, help the troubled to know peace of mind and be with the grieving in those in their final days. Guide all healthcare professionals to serve those in need and provide them with protection from illness or despair and give patience to those who must bear with their infirmities or disabilities. O Lord, hear us especially today as we pray for Lou, Kathy, Brian, Bill, Steve, Mary, Don, Gary, Pastor David, Michael, Jack, Bob, Marlo, Marie, Rosemary, James, Ruth, Pastor Townsend, Leah, Ron, Mike, Danielle, Pastor David, Pete, Susan, Barbara, Tom, Marilyn, Linda, Jack, Walter, Susan, Merlene, Noah, Lance, and all those that we name before you in our own hearts and minds. Oh, gracious God, you know their needs and their worries. We ask that you would be with them. If it be your will, grant them health and healing, strength and recovery. But above all, remind them of your presence and assure them of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And blessed Lord, we pray that you would be with all that have been and currently are infected by the COVID virus. Grant them healing and health and recovery and give all our leaders wisdom and compassion as they lead us in this trying time and help us care for those who are around us. Provide vaccines for those who would like to take them so that we may be safe from the illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you know the 
the needs of those who are uh, mainly centered in Texas who are still suffering the effects of the winter storm that came their way. We ask that you would be with them, comfort them with your peace, and prom or remind them that despite all that they have lost, you have not lost them, for you continue to care for them, continue to love them, continue to provide for them. Guide them in the days, the weeks, and the months ahead as they attempt to recover from this storm and, and give them the assurance that they are not alone or forgotten. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, be with us at Lake Oconee Lutheran Church as we continue the Red Letter Challenge this week. We, we confess that it's hard to forgive and let go of the sins of others, especially when they feel to go against us but give us the confidence of knowing that you are with us, that your forgiveness covers us and then splashes over in our life to cover those who are around us as well. Help us go forgiving even as you have called us to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, Deal graciously with all those who mourn, with the family of Max and with the family of Georgina. Comfort them with your peace. Pour out your spirit upon them and remind them that casting every care on you, they may know the consolation of your love and power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And hear us, O oh Lord. Give answer to the prayers of your people. Pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ whom with the Father and the Spirit, you are one God and one Lord forevermore. Amen. Hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing that Jesus gives to you out of his love, grace, and mercy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Let's close our service by singing our final hymn, God Loves Me Dearly. I'm glad that you are here. Uh, I'm so thankful for your presence, whether you're here in person or if you're watching us online. Praise God for his people gathered together to eagerly hear his word.
thank you very much for coming. Um, we're going to celebrate this week with those who are celebrating. We've got the birthday girl here. Grace is celebrating. Grace Rates is celebrating a birthday this week. We celebrate with her. Um, I do have a couple of announcements to share with you coming up. Um, and, and these are all in different sections in your bulletin for more information. So we still need volunteers to help us. You've heard me talk about this in the past. There's sign-up sheets on the table by the piano. If you're at home, you can email the church or call the church office, and, and we can sign you up. We're especially looking for volunteers for altar care, altar guild. We're looking for teachers for Sunday school, and we're looking for people to help the video uh, process uh, so uh, you at home can, can watch and worship along with us. Uh, so there's information over there. Um, the Little Free Pantry, um, it's being used more and more and more. It's being used almost every day, I think, um, and emptying out. So we need, again, uh, items to be brought, to be donated to it. Uh, bring those in, and there's, I put sheets, there's one on the table here, there's one on the table in the entry, sheets in case you forgot what we're looking for, they list the, the things that, that we're looking for donations. Um, uh, we need people, uh, if you sign up that week, to, to make sure that you check it regularly. And if you got the papers last week, so the Eatonton Messenger had a, a big article on it, and there's a copy of that out on the bulletin board, but I also heard there was an article in the Greensboro paper and, and uh, a letter that I wrote to the editor in the Lake Oconee News. So the word is getting out, and we thank God for the opportunity to, uh, to help that way. I even put a couple of Bibles in it last week, and at least one of those is gone. Uh, somebody took it. So praise God, it's a sign that his work is being done. Um, on Wednesday, of course, you see uh, it's Lenten, our Lenten service. Remember, we are not meeting on Wednesdays in person, but there is a Wednesday Lenten service online. Uh, so every Wednesday, you'll be able to find it online, and, and you can worship with us that way. Um, and finally, of course, um, not finally, but remember, we're continuing the Red Letter Challenge this week. All this week, we're going to be reading, praying, and thinking about forgiving. And next week, we get to serving. And so we'll be talking about that. Linda, do you have something? Pardon me? Well, because, so the Wednesday Lenten service will be, is not a live service, so it'll be posted between noon and one o'clock in the afternoon, and then you can follow in anytime you want uh, on Wednesdays. It'll remain online um, at that time. And you can find that both on our Facebook page and also on our website at lakeoconelutheran.org. Um, so next week we talk about serving Today, at the end of February, we're closing up our mission of the month, which is for the police and fire uh, department officers of Putnam County. Um, and I forget, there were about 55 individuals that were serving in that way. In March, we're going to actually do the exact same thing, but we're turning our focus to Green County. So we'll deal with the Green County uh, sheriff's department and the fire departments. Um, there's actually a greater number uh, of people that will be serving. So all the things that we brought this past month that God has blessed us, they're out in the narthex. That'll be gone by next Sunday and we'll be repeating the same process. Um, we didn't print one today, but there'll be an insert next week but it'll be the same items and the same purpose uh, of what we did this last month. So uh, that'll be our opportunity to be going and serving uh, others in Jesus' name because of his love. Okay? Did I miss anything? 
Don't forget Bible class on Tuesday, Bible class on Wednesday, Bible class next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, you can join us for all of those and worship next Sunday at 1030. Okay, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Excuse me, Lev. You know what? I had one more thing in my hand and I totally forgot about it. You can stay standing up, but I do want to talk about this. Um, you heard it in our prayers. We were praying for the people in Texas uh, due to the winter storm. I want to read you this email uh, from the president of the te Texas district, who's actually a friend of mine, and he writes this. He says, Please continue to pray prayers for safety, water, and food supplies, and for repairs for the many pipe break floods in churches, schools, and homes. One pastor even lost his home to a fire. We also need prayers that God's peace will prevail in the hearts of all as anxiety levels can ramp up. Losses are mounting in ministries and among church workers, we are partnering with the LCMS to provide grants that help offset insurance deductibles, some that are very high, for churches and church workers. Currently, funds are needed most to help offset insurance deductibles and for disaster cleanup costs for church workers, schools, and ministries. A number of under-resourced congregations and workers are really struggling with the unexpected expense. Uh, any donations received, 100% of all funds donated go directly to assist churches, schools, and church workers. There will be no administration costs. I'm reading that from President Newman because for the next two weeks, we'll put out a free will offering at the entry to the church, a, the big basket. And if you would like to contribute, the, our church will send that in uh, to the Texas district. I like to give you a heads up or notice before I just spring an offering like that. So for the next two weeks, We'll take a special offering apart from our Sunday morning envelopes, and all that money will go to churches and church and schools and church workers in, in Texas dealing with not only, of course, the, the snow and the, the um, cold, but how many floods they had due to pipes freezing in the cold. So that's it. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, love. <laughs>